Welcome back everyone. In this quick episode, we convert our narrow cupboard in our Jayco Swan into a pull-out pantry. It's really quite easy and simple to do. Come along and I'll show you how. Now what we're installing today is this Caboodle 150mm pull-out basket system. So this is a base mount basket system that's approximately 100 millimetres wide, 560 millimetres tall and 450 millimetres deep. If you're looking to buy one of these, it's very important to make sure you get the right size and mounting option. Most people go the base mount as that lifts the unit up and provides clearance for it to come out over the bottom lip of the cupboard. If you do a side mount unit, which some of them have runners on the side, a lot of them are too tall to fit in the standard cabinetry and openings of the caravan joinery, which is typically lower than a standard kitchen cupboard at home. So you have these soft close runners that base mount onto the floor of your caravan or camper trailer. You then have a steel frame chassis that this basket clips onto. And these plates on the front that allow your joinery panel to be fixed onto it to match in with the rest of the joinery inside your camper trailer or caravan. Now in the case of our Jayco caravans and camper trailers, and I suspect most caravans, there's a small lip that runs along the bottom of your cabinetry so that the floor isn't flush with the outside edge of the door, meaning you have a little upturn. So in our case, we'll have to pack the base of this unit up off the floor and that will allow the runners to flow out over that small lip and work properly without fouling on any of your cabinetry joinery. Again, we'll show you this as part of the process. Now I'm going to spice it up a little bit. Been down to Bunnings and bought a slat wall that just happens to be pretty much exactly the same size as a basket unit. So it will go onto the rear as a bit of a backing board to stop things falling off on one side. And then I've got a few of these little tote units which simply click into the slat wall and they can be used to fill in some of the gaps and provide some additional storage. So this is an optional extra you might want to consider when you're doing your install. And as with all my videos, I'll put a full list of the items we've used in the description below. Now the original idea of this pantry unit was to base fix the cupboard door onto it so that you could pull the whole lot out as one assembly. Come across a very slight issue, however. Because you see on the back of the door panel, you have the standard Jayco locking mechanism, which, which sits out roughly 20 to 22 millimeters. Now that's not normally an issue. However, the problem is this locking mechanism actually fouls on one of the vertical metal bars, which forms a structure for the upper level basket inside the pantry unit. There's a number of different ways you could approach this. I think the easiest would be to cut this bar out and then you might do an additional fixing from one of the horizontal bars of the basket onto your cupboard face. And that would allow you to pull it all out as one unit still. The other option I've seen, which I think is what we will do, is you leave the door in place separate to this unit. So we can open and close freely. You, ret you retain the use of the standard Jayco push lock and we don't have to worry about chopping this unit up and butchering it to make it work with the door and the locking mechanism. So what we'll do now is we'll head back into the camper trailer, pull everything out and make sure this will fit correctly before we do any major works. Now fortunately enough, we already used this narrow cupboard as a pantry, but it's incredibly difficult to reach inside and pull things out. So I think a pull out pantry is gonna do wonders for our organization. First step of course is to pull out the contents and remove the center dividing shelf. To remove the shelf, it's quite simple. There are four triangular plastic brackets underneath, the same brackets you see that hold all the cabinetry together in these caravans. You simply remove the plastic cover that sits over the top either with a pick or a sharp knife and that shows two screws leading up and two screws leading into the side of the cabinet. I also had 
uh, another bracket and screw located just in this corner attached to this side panel that runs up here you want to pull that out or else you won't get the shelf out either and then it should be a case of just lifting the shelf up and pulling it out and now we're just going to test fit the unit in to make sure it all fits before we do any major alterations So that's good news. The unit fits in there very, very well. It's got a lot of clearance around it and everything seems to work as planned. The only thing we do need to do is to lift the unit up via some MDF packing just so it can slide out and clear the bottom edge of the cupboard. Moving back into the shed, I've decided I'm going to reuse this shelf that we pulled out from the cupboard that we're disassembling. What you need to do is remove this front lip off the shelf and in our case, we had a screw here, which was part of a bracket onto the side panel. And then there's a small staple. So we'll pull this staple out and then we should be able to pull this lip off the shelf. And now it's a simple case of just pulling this plastic extrusion off. And then we'll use this as a baseboard for our cabinetry with a packer underneath. So I've got some form ply here left over from a few projects. And what we'll do is we'll cut out the outline of the shelf using it as a template and use this as a packer to lift this drawer unit up so that it clears over that small lip. Now this is our packer piece which I've slightly undercut so it's marginally smaller than the shelf unit so it should just slot into the floor. So what we're going to do is fasten this in first and then when it comes time to install the basket unit we will get our finished shelf unit, put that on top and screw everything down into that so it's all nice and tidy and when you look in you wouldn't even notice there's been a modification done. Other than these two small steps, it should be a very, very straightforward installation. It's just that we have to pack it up to make sure the unit will work correctly. So when it comes to installing the pantry basket, there are generally pretty good instructions you can follow. Just note that because we're not putting it into a standard residential joinery unit, that you might need to vary the dimensions a little bit to make it work. So in the case of Caboodle, it's all kitted out that all the measurements are based on one of their 150 mil cupboard units. Uh, our cupboard is obviously slightly different to that and we need to adjust the dimensions appropriately to suit. However, in our case, we can use the setback dimensions that they've got in here for a typical cupboard unit because we're not mounting onto the door. If you're going the other route and fixing the door face onto the front of the basket unit, you'll have to subtract 20 mil off each of the set out dimensions so the unit sits 20 mil further forward on the base floor panel that is so that you actually allow for the 20 mil cabinet thickness that it needs to slide over to connect to the door. So to start the process I've just quickly put a center line on our floor panel noting this is the front of the cupboard and your unit your base unit will fix in this area here. The instructions for the caboodle unit set out the holes based on the outside faces of the unit which won't work in our instance. So laying this pantry on its side I can measure the centre line from hole to hole on each of the mounting plates as being 16mm. So we'll draw two secondary lines on this floor panel eight millimeters out from both sides of the center line and they will be our reference lines for the four mounting holes that we put in for the drawer slides of the pantry unit.
Now based on the instructions, we do the first hole in 50 mil from the outside edge of the cupboard. And the second one is 310 mil. Now it's simply a case of drilling out the pilot holes and the floor panel is ready to go. Now when it comes to installing the optional slat wall panel, you want to install it with these tabs facing up and that allows your toast to lock in. And then you'll note there's a number of holes. I'm going to use these as a mounting holes as I line up with the bars on the basket. To secure the slat wall onto the bars of the basket, I'm going to use some very small nylon P clips. The little plastic clips which look something like that and they've got a mounting hole through them. So in our case they get mounted upside down so the holes on the top and the bar runs along underneath. These should work extremely well. I hunted around for a fair while to find some brackets and these are the neatest solution. And then I've got some really small stainless steel bolts with nylock nuts on the rear and they'll simply go through and secure it all together just like I'll show you now. And then this is the front of the unit here so I'm mounting it onto the back side of the van so when you pull it out you've got access from the front side and then this sort of screens the back side. So it's a simple case of putting your P-clips on in the right spot. And I can just hang off the bar. And we'll start one off by holding it in place and putting the bolt through. The bolts are a very tight fit through the P-clip. And then it's a case of just doing up the nuts from the rear. Now it's just a simple case of bolting it all in, starting with the packer for the floor. Now we want to put our false floor in. Now when it comes to installing the pantry unit itself, you want to click off the chrome cage and then fully extend the runners out so you've got access to the mounting holes. I've just sat the front of the chassis on a few packers just to stop it from moving around too much while it's in here. But the first screw goes into the first hole and you should be able to locate the rear ones which I think will be in the rear hole of the runners. One thing you will note is that it twists on the runners so I'm going to get them all started then I can square it all up and make sure it goes down all nice and straight. With the two front screws it would be handy to have an extended Phillips head drive bit I've only got a standard one and with my impact driver I can't quite get through the chassis so I had to finish it off with the standard drill because I could get that in there. Now it's just a simple case of clicking the basket back on and then it's a simple case of just sliding it in. Just like that. So that's the install pretty much done. Now a few little things to note which I'll put in as edited comments through the video when I go through it, I ended up putting another layer of form ply underneath because I found that the sliders, when fully extended, still fouled on that little lip on the bottom of the cabinet. The other thing I found is even though the mounting holes for the runners were positioned as per the caboodle instructions, it still felt like the unit sat too far back. So I've pulled it forward, the 20 mil I discussed that you probably would do if you were going to mount onto the cupboard front itself. With it mounted 20 mil forward, so that is the holes are 30 mil back from the, the inside face of the cupboard, it sits pretty much flush which is quite nice. So when the door closes you can lock it and if it does move around a little bit during transit it, it, it won't go a long way 
because it's actually sitting on this locking mechanism internally rather than having another 20 mil where it could potentially slide around. However, with the soft close mechanisms, it, it, it's got a fairly good hold on the floor when it's in the fully closed position. Now, one other little issue I encountered was these totes in that I must have incorrectly measured them. They fit fine through this way, but on the side, sideways, they don't really fit, particularly once you've got all the framing and everything around them. However, I've come up with a solution and it's kind of a hybrid of the original idea using the slat wall. So I've run back down to Bunnings and got some of these soap dish holders. They're 100 mil wide, so they're exactly the same as a frame, as I sort of discussed at the introduction. But what I've done is I've modified them, which I'll show you right now, essentially cutting the tabs off, which suspend the soap dish out from the wall. And then what we do is I actually cut the corner of the main hoop on the back or support, which allows it to go into the slat wall. So we've come up with a successful solution to it. And again, it just uses up some of that waste of space that you get in between the two racks. That's a unit out. And that gives you a bit of an idea of the flexibility. It just makes accessing everything so much easier. And at the end of the day, it makes a really good use of this narrow cupboard and keeps all the services operational in the rear. You really can't go wrong. As I always say, if you like watching these DIY videos, please like, comment below, and subscribe to our channel. It helps us out greatly. I've got another little project I'm about to skip across to in our buffet to improve that, so stay tuned, that's coming up, as well as our video from the River Mile Big Four Caravan Park up at Bulladilla. We just spent a week up there, it was a little bit wet, but I really want to give you all a bit of a show round to see what this place is like. It is superb. So anyway, I'll push my little cabinet away, shut the door, and call it an afternoon. Thanks for watching, get out there, Stay safe and have fun.